What's up gals and guys, or guys and gals, whatever. This is a video about tips for new dental assistants. And if you're wondering why I'm looking down, I have my notebook full of notes. So we're gonna just go over this. I pretty much saw a video and I was like, that's a really good idea, I should make one. If you're thinking about becoming a registered dental assistant, you've come to the right place because I've been one for about two years now, going on three. It's it's a lot, honestly, it really is. So if you are not really willing and open to learn new things, this probably is not a good job for you and you should probably look for something else because it does take a lot of money and time to get everything down. Dentists go to school for about eight years and then if they go into a specialty, it'll probably be like, I don't know, four more years, I think, for a specialty. But with that being said, dentists go to school for eight years. Dental assistants only go to school for like three months to a year, I think. You are expected to, to pretty much know the dentist's next move on everything. And it's kind of crazy because they get eight years to learn everything, we get three months. I've known a few dental assistants that actually have become dentists too because it makes a lot of sense. We know everything that they need, we already know the steps, we could practically do a filling and stuff ourselves. So... This is something that you will have to be very patient with and just, it's pretty much like going to school all over again, but just for something completely different. And, and on top of this, this is a human interaction job. You're not, we don't simply cover a patient's faces and just, you know, get to work. We're not like surgeons. You have to be personable. You have to be able to talk to somebody and you have to be able to like communicate well. And you can't just go in, I don't know, I don't know how to put this into words, but you can't just work with people like at this type of job and just be careless because you will get sued at some point, whether it be for malpractice or for defamation of character. Maybe you're talking too loud about a patient that you didn't like and they heard you. So, okay, well anyways, let's just get into this. Number one, I put down, don't take anything personally. It's gonna be really hard. The dentist is gonna literally talk shit to you and tell you that you suck at your job, why don't you know this, blah, blah, blah. <sighs> And you just need to keep your cool. I've actually had this happen to me and I almost thought about talking major shit to the dentist and walking the fuck out and being like, fuck you, bro. You think it's okay to talk to me like that? But then I'm like, mm, whoo, whoo, soothe, breathe. I'm not gonna fucking react, chill. So I just fucking stood there and took it. I'm like, okay. But then when I went home, yeah, I did take it personally. I went on YouTube and I fucking watched a video to improve myself. And then also dentists are very rude. I mean, you will meet a lot of great dentists that are not rude. You'll be great friends with them, whatever. But I will say a lot of these fucking dentists are rude. And the second industry where people kill themselves the most is dentistry. And it's dentist. So I think the first is a medical doctor and second is dentist. Can you imagine why? My theory is because dentists usually treat their employees, patients, and everybody around them like shit because they think that they're, they're so much better because they went through so much of school. But I don't like that. I don't know. I feel like just going to school for that long gives these people just that little bit of entitlement to be a little, just not like the best people. Number two, always be helpful and have a great attitude. Do not, don't, I don't know how to say this, but like be willing to help with anything. Be willing to jump into any procedure, even if you haven't done it. The dentist will guide you through it most likely, or an assistant will be probably on the side telling you what to do. Always be helpful and have a great attitude. I kind of just lost my thought. I saw something dirty and then it freaked me out. Always just be helpful. Don't be, don't think that you're too good to do anything. Literally, there's been some practices that I go to where they don't have enough assistance or even if they do, the dentist is still helping turn over the room and they're actually doing a better job than I am. And that's really rare. Don't be afraid to help with anything, whether it's putting, um, I don't know, something in the mailbox, taking out the trash, turning over rooms, learning the tools, putting up the tools and doing sterilization, those types of things. Just never be afraid to just jump in there and get in because that is how you are gonna learn and you are going to get better. Nobody really ever learns from not doing hands-on. That's the way you're gonna learn in this industry. Like, I don't know, unless you're just somebody that is able to read and just get everything down like that, but really hands-on will be where you're gonna learn because then you're gonna see the way you hand the dentist tools, the way they hand it to you, what they want, what they need, the process of each procedure. At the beginning, if you're starting out, I would highly recommend, and even if you're just starting a new job too, I would highly recommend getting a notebook or notepad and just taking notes on everything because it's 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 a lot to take in whenever you start a new job, especially when being a dental assistant because they almost assume that you know everything already, but everywhere you go is different. So 
every dentist is different. The base of these procedures like fillings, crowns, and everything is pretty much the same. The steps are always pretty much the same, but dentists, each dentist is different. They, may like, they might like to do a certain thing their own way and not be like everybody else. You will have to adjust to who you work with and learn what they like. Some dentists are very efficient. They almost don't even need an assistant and it seems like, I'm not racist or anything, but it seems like Asian, Asian guys that are dentists, they are very efficient and I've worked with one guy that was Asian. He was like an oral surgeon. He was really fucking mean, but he was, I don't know. He was a hardcore dentist. He was in there, out there, and just psh, he removed wisdom teeth. So, you know, you know, one of those doctors, if you know what I'm saying, and you're watching and you work for one. Ugh. Okay. Don't be afraid to look around and open drawers. This goes for everybody. I honestly think just because you never know what kind of situation you could be in, everybody should know where the oxygen is in the office. Everybody should know where the Ambu mask is and stuff like that to do CPR just in case because you never know what could happen. What if the main assistant that is the main one that does CPR is knocked out and she needs CPR? Who, who, who's supposed to fucking, I would hope the office person or the dentist or maybe another assistant, but pretty much, I don't know, anything could happen. And also, I just dropped my Dr. Pepper. At my last job, we would do these procedures called all on fours, which is pretty much where they call it teeth in a day where you come in, you pretty much get all your rotten teeth or whatever teeth that you have left removed. And then you'll leave with like a full denture of teeth that day. Um, we used to do that and we were actually doing the procedure on the owner's mom and he owns like seven or 10 practices or something. I don't work there anymore, but we were doing the all in four on his mom and they did not have an emergency kit like set up or even in the building. So if anything would happen, if she stopped breathing, if she had any blood, sugar, pressure issues, we weren't prepared at all. If there was any type of allergic reaction, we weren't fucking prepared. We would have been fucked. Well, his mom started to get, I guess, I think it was low blood sugar, so she started to pass out. So everybody starts freaking out. We don't have this emergency kit that we were supposed to have. And they pretty much, I think, just went next door and got her orange juice or some like sugar packets and put her on her tongue and she was okay. But still, <sighs> don't be afraid to look around, open drawers, know where tools are. First off, always know where the oxygen and the Ambu mask are just because that could be somebody's life or death if you don't know where that is and that's a really big deal. So I would highly recommend, they always tell you, I think in dental assistant school to know where the, I don't know, like chemi chemical data sheets or something. So try to find out, locate where those are. At my job, we have them just in a binder at this little counter thing. So be willing to study and learn on your own time. And this is very important because whenever I started, it would literally make me mad whenever somebody would tell me, oh, I'm going to give you this so you can go home and study it. It's like, I'm not getting paid to study. I don't want to study. I don't want to waste my time. But in the end, it's just going to make you better at your job. And as you realize, as time goes on, as you get better, dude, everything just, it's, your job just becomes so easy, getting better at things. Getting better, paying attention, and just like, yeah, just really getting things down. It makes a huge difference. It'll make your job just so easy. Like for example, the dentist that I work with now, he was very, very rude to me about how, how my x-rays were coming out. Because whenever you work with little kids, it's not like adults where you can just put the thing in and they bite because little kids, literally sometimes I'm taking x-rays on like two year olds, three year olds and so on. So their mouths are like, they can't close with that thing. But we will pretty much, I will get the x-ray sensor and I will put it in their mouth. I'll them not to bite down and I'll hold it in and then I'll get the x-ray gun which is the nomad and I will just take the picture but I have to say I wish I had a dummy because I would do great videos to let y'all know how to do x-rays free-handedly maybe I'll get my boyfriend or something to do it but pretty much we have to hold the x-rays for little kids we have to freehand them so like aiming them is a totally different you really have to know the structure of the face. Like for PAs, I always try to shoot up out like right here. I like to think, okay, whenever you're shooting these certain types of photos, like for this, you almost want to be making the ring like almost seem like it's going through your eye socket to the x-ray sensor that's down here. Then for the bottom, you go below this bone and go directly at the x-ray. You're always at an angle, so if something isn't looking right, probably just need to change the angle, adjust it. Practice makes perfect. If you have a friend that'll let you take x-rays on them or if they're letting you practice on patients, you know, be kind of careful because you don't want to just be flashing x-ray after x-ray after x-ray at people, so. <sighs> 
But anyways, the dentist was really rude to me about my x-rays. He just pretty much told me like, if you're getting, if you're getting cone cut x-rays, that means that you're literally just not paying attention. But the thing is, I've seen the dentist that I work for do it. I've seen my coworker that's been a dental assistant for longer than me do it. So everybody does it. It's bound to happen at some point. But the main thing is you just want to make sure you get the teeth or the tooth that you want to get. And yeah, just don't be afraid to study on your free time. It will literally just make your job and you better at your job. So it's only to 100% improve yourself. And plus these are skills that you probably will carry past whatever job that you have at first. You'll probably have multiple jobs or you may even decide that you don't want to have a job. You want to temp and just make, make your own schedule, work when you want, where you want, with how much you want, you know? It's not a bad thing. I've actually tempted a few, no, oh, I've tempted a lot actually on the side. I just don't really anymore because I'm working on YouTube, working on my own personal stuff. And then on top of that, COVID-19 is still going on. So that's a big deal too. Study the names of the tools. If you do not know what the name of a tool is, study it, write it down, take a picture. I don't know that this is really necessary, but it kind of is. I think everybody should know the basic tools like mirror, explore, cotton pliers, and then everybody should know the basic uses for the tools. What, are the, what does the mirror do? What does the explorer do? What does a discoid cleoid do? What does a dental dam do? What does all this stuff do? There's a reason why we have it. There's a reason why we use it in dentistry. So I think it's a really important thing for people to kind of have like a general understanding of this stuff. Cause it really is a big deal. Plus like, I don't know. You don't want the doctor to be like, hey, can you go get me a Minnesota? And then you're like, what is a Minnesota? And if you're wondering what a Minnesota is, that's literally, I will insert a picture up here on the screen somewhere, but it is literally just this like piece of metal thing that you retract the cheeks with when you're doing like surgical procedures. So, pretty much it just helps, helps you out a lot more if you know the tool names. And then some people, they're very specific about that. If you don't know what it is, they just think you're unprofessional. You're not really good at dental assisting. So just study, learn the names. You can look them up on Google. If y'all want, I can do a video about the tools maybe. Of course, I don't have any tools here, but we can always make a video somehow, okay? Um, okay. When setting up rooms, go through to, okay, this is a good one. When you're setting up rooms, literally, set them up and go through the procedure in your head from start to finish whatever it is whether it's like a ortho bonding okay whether it's ortho bonding or whether it's fillings a crown or an expander or anything like that think about it from start to finish what are we gonna do for filling it's obvious tigger come here okay this is kind of random if the dentist likes a certain tool always grab it always have it to the side and if you think you might need a tool and he hasn't asked you to get it go ahead and grab that fucking thing have it in the room, have it to the side, because I will tell you this, I will tell everybody this, the dentist and whoever's on the chair too, whether it's a kid or an adult, the dentist hates having to have you get up to get stuff. It looks so unprofessional and so bad. It looks like you weren't even prepared. Always have it out to the side. You know, if you don't use it, you can re-sterilize it or you can wash it with a cavi wipe and be good. If you don't like what you're doing, ask questions. Oh, no, ugh, if you don't like. If you don't know what you're doing, ask questions. Don't try and figure it out yourself. For example, right now at my job, we have this guy, he's He's not gonna be a dental assistant, but he's helping me right now. And it kind of made me mad the other day, last Friday pretty much, he was helping me with stuff and he just, he doesn't know anything. He just doesn't really pay attention when we taught him stuff. So the dentist would ask him to do something and he would just literally just try to start scrounging things together and get it done. But he obviously didn't know what the fuck he was doing. And then I would walk in and the dentist is like, okay, y'all need to switch places because you're just not getting it. And I feel it, but like, okay. If you do not know how to turn on the oxygen or you just don't want to admit that you weren't paying attention whenever my coworker taught it to you, you should probably honestly admit it because for one, it's your job. And this isn't just any other job where we're like a cashier. We are working with people and their lives and their bodies and in their mouth. People, it's like, yeah, I know we work with little kids, but they're still fucking humans too. You need to treat them. Don't act like you know what to do when you don't. Just ask questions because people will appreciate that so much more. And you're honestly probably making the lead dental assistant's job so much harder by not listening and doing it and just like not being honest. Seriously, dentists hate that shit. If you say that you know how to do something, you better know how to fucking do it. Cause if that dentist figures out that you don't know how to do it, they're gonna call you ass out. And they're gonna make you feel like a dumbass in front of the fucking patient and in front of your coworkers. Shit, it may even just be them, but they will. So 
y'all need to be prepared. Eat snacks and breakfast before going into work just because right now with COVID-19, I don't get a lunch break. And before that, even then, sometimes... I guess we would normally get a lunch break, but at my past job, they would make us work through a lunch break. We wouldn't get one. We were just expected to just kind of like go through the day and I would end up getting a headache. So this is why I recommend always eat a good full meal before going into work. And if you're not able to eat breakfast, at least snack on something, even if it's a banana, Dude, eat something because sometimes you are so busy, you don't even have time to get a break, to eat, to drink, to do anything. Sometimes you don't even have a break to go pee. And I know you're probably thinking, what? That's ridiculous, but no, it's actually true. Don't go to work to make friends, go to make money. That was one of my first mistakes that I ever made in my first job. I thought I was there to make friends, learn from people and blah, blah, blah. I did, but um, uh, it was just a bad situation. This was, wasn't good. If you're there and you're focused on your money, that's all that matters. You won't be worried about what anybody else is doing or this and that. And then honestly, I just feel like at every dental assistant job I've had, even the temp ones, it always just seems like there's always some kind of drama at work. And I don't know, I'm over it. I just want to live my life and just kind of be free. Always have a pen in your pocket or on you because, and make sure it's one that you literally keep on you all day not one that somebody can take because you will always need a pen to write down shit. And as soon as you do not have the pen, you will fucking need it again. So always just make sure to have a pen or two in your pocket, one that you always keep on you. Don't ever give it to your coworker. And maybe make sure to have post-it notes or a notepad just to take notes of anything like blood pressure, height, weight, or anything like that that you might need to take. That's just kind of really quick and like, uh, so that was pretty much my like 10 tips for new dental assistants. Hopefully that wasn't too bad. But I feel like honestly, if you follow all these tips and you study and you try to get better and just like really pay attention and learn a lot, you'll do great. And I think the main thing is honestly, if you're always helpful and you have a really great attitude and then you show like a strong, strong willingness to learn, people will want to work with you. People will want to hire you and people will want to teach you. So if y'all like this video, like the video, like, subscribe, let me know what y'all thought. And if y'all want more RDA videos, please let me know because I don't know. <laughs> I've thought about making a lot of them. I'm just like, who would even watch this? Cause I'm just making random videos at this point. So yeah. Bye everybody. Hope you have a good Sunday. Hey everybody, if you made it to the end, please like, subscribe and turn on the bell notification. Until next time.